Well, welcome back. Well, Hezbollah rockets hitting Haifa, Israel's third largest city, for the first time overnight. It comes one day after the anniversary of Hamas's attack on Israel last October 7th. Back in the United States, thousands of anti-Israel protesters stormed the streets of New York City yesterday. Demonstrations were also held at Columbia University and at colleges in Maryland, Colorado and California, among others. President Biden did not call Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday on the one year mark of the attacks. Vice President Harris gave a word salad answer when asked why Netanyahu does not seem to be listening or sharing information with the Biden-Harris administration any longer. Here's what she said to that. Watch this. Well, Bill, the work that we have done has resulted in a number of movements in that region by Israel that were very much prompted by or a result of uh, many things, including our advocacy for what needs to happen in the region. Oh, okay. Unrest in the Middle East, putting renewed focus on Iran's nuclear capabilities. Meanwhile, the Wall Street Journal writes this. U.S. officials have said it would take Iran less than two weeks to convert its current 60 percent nuclear fuel stockpile into weapons grade material. Joining me now is North Dakota Senator Kevin Kramer, a member of the Senate Banking, Armed Services, Veterans Affairs and Environment and Public Works Committees. Senator, thanks very much for being here this morning. You're focused on economics. I know that. But you just heard what Kamala Harris said about Israel. Your reaction. Well, she's right about one thing. It is the actions of the Biden-Harris administration that has uh, created some of the issues going on in Israel and around the world. And those actions are not doing very much or worse yet, empowering, for example, energy production in places like Russia and Iran, empowering uh, Iranian uh, oil production that went from 200,000 barrels per day under under um, Donald Trump to 3.2 million barrels per day today that fills their coffers so that they can have more money to fight wars and to and to try to exterminate Israel. And by the way, the United States is next in their dogma. So she's right about that. The projection of weakness from this administration is what's unleashed Vladimir Putin. Um, it's what's given Xi Jinping more, you know, more hope that he could one day dominate the world. So mm-hmm. she's right. It is their actions or lack of them that have created this situation. The problem is it's added to the problem, not to a solution. And and one of those actions has been um, uh, ignoring the sanctions on Iran, uh, enabling enabling Iran to generate billions and billions of dollars. And they went ahead and used that money to, you know, support the proxies that are attacking Israel. Uh, but look, All we are restricting yep. our own energy development. That's the crazy part. While restricting the United States energy that's production right. and, yeah, that's and right. where we could be, you know, we could be the dominant one, not them. And, and, and I should point out that, you know, fracking is just a part of it. Right. I mean, she says, oh, I'm right. not for fracking. And now I am for fracking. Yeah, right. Fracking is just right. a part of it because any administration could really put a damper on oil production. In, in right. any way, by by throwing all the regulatory might against that's these right. oil companies, and that's what they've been doing. You know, lots of new regulations, not lots of new fees. That's going to put a, a, a damper and a freeze on oil production right there. You don't have to do fracking and not do <laughs> that's fracking. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. It's it's everything from how you produce, you know, how the pipelines are sited, yeah. moving product, the, the right. terminals, getting barges, all of those things. But these are heavy, high capital investments that require some longevity, that require the signals, the the economic signals, market signals that we could make up that three million barrels that that Iran is currently producing. And yeah. and it's much more if we just had those things. But they get but they have to be long term signals, Maria. That's that's, I think, the challenge for us. Well, let's talk about the issues at hand right here, more Mm -hmm. of an urgent fashion, and that is this hurricane. Florida is bracing for Hurricane Milton now. Could become one of the most destructive hurricanes on record. Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is warning that FEMA is out of money, Senator. Okay, A FEMA administrator doubled down on it yesterday. Watch this. We don't have enough money to continue throughout the rest of the year. And we went into immediate needs funding earlier in the year to make sure we could do just what we've been doing through Helene, as well as now the preparations for Milton. So now Joe Biden is urging Congress to come back and approve more money for FEMA. By the end of the year, Vice President Harris is still under fire 
uh, for yesterday or two days ago saying she's going to send $157 million to Lebanon. Lebanon. Yeah. While residents of at least six states are struggling to recover from Hurricane Helene. Fox News is Peter Ducey pressed the White House press secretary, Queen Jean-Pierre, about it yesterday. Watch this. President Biden is fond of saying, show me your budget and I will tell you what you value. If he's got money for people in Lebanon right now without Congress having to come back, what does it say about his values? There is not enough money right now for his people values, in North Carolina who his, need it. That's not misinformation. No, the way you're asking me the question is misinformation. What you're asking me is why Congress needs to come back and do their job. That's what you're asking me. Congress needs to come back and do their job and provide extra assistance, extra funding to disaster relief fund. That's what Congress needs to do, and we're going to continue to urge that. You may not want that, but that's okay. That's what this president wants, and that's what the vice president wants. Thanks, everybody. Uh, why would Peter Ducey not want that? And, and yeah, I don't know. Look, she's blaming you, Okay. You and your colleagues, right, you got to get back right, to work right, and you got to get more right. money to FEMA. Where's the money, mm -hmm. Senator? So first of all, we just, as you know, before the, um, the, the election recess, passed a continuing resolution that includes $20 billion for the Disaster Relief Fund. That, that, that whole budget, the FEMA budget, is $30 billion a year. And so when he says we need to come back and, and provide more funding by the end of the year, I have no doubt one, one area that largely unites Congress is the, the natural disasters that are so expensive that only the generosity of the accumulated tax um, taxes of, of generous Americans can suffice. But we'll be back after the election. We'll have until December 20th to, to do a, an appropriations bill. They have $20 billion in the meantime. So that's not yeah. the problem. The problem is, Peter Ducey touched on it, it's what is their priority? Is their priority the folks in Lebanon? Is their priority uh, illegal immigrants coming across the border? Or, yes, the, or is yes. their priority the people of the United States of America? And yeah, yeah I think I mean, you're right. Yes, yes, and, you know, maybe. Well, I mean, how, how do you see it any other way when during a week of massive hurricanes where Hurricane Helene had people hanging from trees, they right. lost everything. How is it possible that that week she puts out a post that she's sending one hundred and fifty seven million dollars to Lebanon? OK, a group well, of Republican yeah. senators have expressed concern over right. FEMA's connection to the border crisis. They sent a letter to President Biden writing this. FEMA's continued entanglement in DHS's efforts to respond to the border crisis could impact its readiness and emergency response mission. FEMA has been pulled into a border crisis mission. And in 2022, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre admitted that some of the FEMA money was going to illegal migrants. So they can't deny it now. Here's the tape from 2022. Watch. FEMA regional administrators have been meeting with city officials on site to coordinate to coordinate available federal uh, support from FEMA and other uh, federal agencies. Funding is also available through FEMA's emergency food and shelter program to eligible local governments and non-for-profit non organizations upon request uh, to support humanitarian relief for migrants. We'll continue to do what we can as a federal government to support uh, these cities as we rebuild our asylum program processing system after it was gutted uh, by the Trump administration. The senator, I mean, in, is that in and of itself impeachable? I mean, is that in and of itself such a dereliction of duty to clean out the FEMA money to send it to illegal migrants? Well, Maria, there, obviously there's a lot of things that get conflated in a statement like she just made, starting with mission. Whether it's impeachable or not, I don't know, but certainly their election of duty. J just remember, in addition to that, since since that um, recording a couple of years ago, they've been teaching, FEMA's been teaching their employees how to do a more equitable distribution of uh, disaster aid because the oh, LGBTQ plus community is disproportionately harmed by natural disaster. Well, Maria, let me assure you, hurricanes do not discriminate. As you've noticed, they do not discriminate. So this idea that their focus, their mission is on things that are not relevant to the problem. It's unbelievable. How does an LGBTQ community get harder hit than another community during a hurricane? Precisely. Senator, look, we'll keep the spotlight on it. Thanks very much. Kevin Kramer, good Thank to you. catch up with you, sir. Thanks very good much for being here. We'll be right back. Our animal spirits in the market. How these traditional traits can help investors prosper and create a chaos-proof portfolio this election cycle. Charles breaks it